Give us to give us a word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Good morning, all. That made me tired just watching it. I don't know about you. Praise God. It's one month till Christmas. Amen. And on Thursday, I sent a text message to... Shh. On Thursday, I sent a text message out to a lot of you, just asking you to join me in, in 40 days of prayer till New Year's Day 2019. That's been a very fast year. I don't know about you, but I think that's gone remarkably fast. 40 days left of this year. And I want you to stay, to stay with me, folks. Eyes forward. Give me your full attention. Have I got your full attention? There's many types of word. Many types of prophetic word. Words that do this, words that do that, words that have this effect or that effect. But the word of increase, this word increase, for me, I would describe it as effective. Effective. If you will just listen, oh God, if you will just listen to me, listen to God, this can work in you just like it's worked in me and anybody here who will just trust that God is good and trying to bless you, that's all. It's not easy to bless people, you know. They're full of doubt and unbelief. So our, what the, the principle we're working on is this. That last New Year's Eve, remember that, Simeon? I remember it like it was yesterday. A powerful anointing came into this place. Powerful. And God spoke over 2018 that you would increase this year. Now, do you know what, folks? I think you believe it. Yes. Amen? I think you believe it. I'm increasing in ways that you know and in ways that you don't know. Amen. <laughs> there's, there, 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 there's a lot available to you. I don't think doubting that he has said that is your problem. Appropriating it is the problem. Receiving it. Believing. I do believe. Lord, I believe. Help me receive. Lord, I believe you want to increase me. But today, would you do something in me? Do something in my spirit. What has been my blockage? Last week we looked at one of the blockages. Privacy. Having something that only you and God know about. Having a secret place. Many miracles in scripture came about through a, a word that was conceived in secret. And the person was not permitted to tell anybody. And in the gestation period of faith, which was perfect faith with the Holy Spirit and God the Father perfect faith and then eventually through gestation the miracle manifest and then you can testify and I want every one of you to get pregnant hallelujah don't take that the wrong way I want every one of you to receive something from God amen, amen. receive something and then be discerning whether it's something you go public like petition no problem but many of these things for me God has taken me on this path excuse me here and guided me. Some of you have been reading your Bible for years and nothing's changed. What's that song? Read your Bible, pray every day. <laughs> right? I, I've got no doubt you do. But reading the Bible, there are millions of people around this world who read the Bible from cover to cover every year. And they don't change at all. Some of them not even saved. And you will hear many pastors, many leaders saying, you know, read your Bible, read your Bible. I've got no problem with that. I completely agree with it. Are we okay, Ray? <laughs> I completely agree with it. But there's more to it than just the Logos. The Logos is the written word of God. But when you read your Bible, you're supposed to hear the voice of God. Okay? If you read the word, I'm not saying don't read the word. If you read the word... You should read it until you hear the word, and that's what brings increase. Amen? So many pastors, and it's a very common thing, you'll hear it said constantly, the most important thing is to read your Bible. I disagree. What I mean is, that statement is incomplete. Because millions of people read their Bible and nothing changes. Completely true. The most important thing is to read your Bible and hear. There's two parts to that truth. To read your Bible, I would say, 
until you hear. That book on your knee, that phone on your knee, it, it's not so much something you read as something you hear. And, and failure to do this, it, it turns us into a religious people. At the top of your notes page, uh, it, uh, I'll be as quick as I can today because we've got a lot to do. But I've got an important word. I want to send you out, Simeon, with this word in your heart. Okay? Look at these uh, increase. Don't leave the, the side that says increase. Don't leave 2018 without it. From Logos to Rima. If you look at the eras, the epochs in history, there was the era of the patriarchs, there was the time of the law, there was the time of the priesthood, the kings, the gospel age, the church age, which we're in today. And nothing, there's not a lot similar between the age of the patriarchs and the age of the kings, between the law time and the gospel time. Everything changed. But you know what? One principle continued from Genesis to Revelation. One principle has been consistent throughout it all. And you know what it is? Listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. So I'm not asking you this morning, do you read the word? I'm sure you do, and I hope you do, and please continue to do so. But I'm asking you a different question. Do you hear his voice? Eyes forward, full attention. I promise you this. If you hear... One word can change your life. Okay? I was born with a speech impediment. You know my story. Speech impediment. It was a great embarrassment to me. And when I got saved, I still had my speech impediment. How did God fix it? He spoke. He spoke. I remember it. I was lying on the floor. And I heard a word. It scared the life out of me. But that word said, preach. Preach. And it's not just a word that you hear. It created me. It changed me. And if you can just read the word, yes, read the word. But it's the rima. Amen? If you can hear from God all throughout history, over and over and over again. See, a pastor will say to me, the most important thing is to read the Bible. I would say to that pastor, I'd say, Pastor, if I read the Bible, the Bible says, listen to his voice. Huh? Right? If you're saying the most important thing is to read the Bible, I say amen. But your, your statement is not complete. And that's why I'm not changing. That's why I'm stuck. Because just reading, it's not, it's not good enough. I need to read with a discipline until I'm leaving with something that's going to change me. Now, I've been praying in here early in the mornings. I'm not going to look at anybody now because I've seen some of you. <laughs> In my visions and in my prayer time. So I can guarantee you, God is trying to do something very good. Amen. Very good. So please, folks, don't leave this year without it. Don't leave this year without it. He's a good God. So read until you hear. And then when you hear, obey what you hear. And that will bring increase. That's the scriptural principle or step-by-step process. That he will take you through. Romans 10, 17. The most famous scripture when it comes to hearing from God. It says faith comes by. I thought it came by reading the word of God, right? And the word there. Uh, the, uh, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. word of God. And the word there for word is the word rhema. Not the word logos. Hello? The word there. So everything in your life will increase by faith. The less faith, the more you're going to decrease. The more faith, the more you're going to increase. So faith comes by hearing God's voice. Faith comes by hearing God's voice. And hearing God's voice comes by? By the rhema. So if I just constrain myself until I'm actually hearing his voice. I, I, how can I put it? I don't tell you even a fraction of the words from God I get. Not even a fraction. Do you know why? Because I think you would judge me. (laughs) I would think, I think that you think I'm trying to look good or something. Do you know what I mean? Do you understand? I, I can't help it. I don't even have to try. I don't have to do anything. Just a walking receptor. Whether I'm on top of the world or down in the pits, I still hear. David's right. 
when I was on the mountaintop, I heard. When I was at the, the depths of the sea, I still hear. And my gift works no matter what state I'm in. And I walk around this world like a radar. Yeah. It's just amazing. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Don't judge me. I was in Chicago, just walking out of O'Hare Airport in Chicago. And there's a ton of people going this way. We're going to get on a plane. And behind a glass panel, there's a ton of people going that way, getting off a plane, you know. So I'm just walking along, and my spirit's alive. I'm not particularly praying. And I look at the crowd, and in the crowd of hundreds of people, there's this woman with a yellow coat walking like everybody else. She doesn't look in any way significant. But see when you can hear? It looks different. So in my spirit, I just looked at her and thought, she's not well. Simple as that. She's not well. And I just carried on walking. I didn't pray. I was just still kind of thinking. I look this way. I take 10 paces, look back, and she's on the ground already. Collapsed already. Surrounded by people. Amazing, isn't it? And people say to me, how can you marry Marys so quickly when God speaks? Well, you see, when you get used to it, when you get practice it, right? David said, I killed the lion, I killed the bear. So what's the problem? God spoke to me yesterday. God spoke to me today. It's the same voice. I have learned over time to believe that voice. Amen. Did you get that? It's very important. So practice listening Practice listening and over and over again. I came out of my house. I lived just down the road here in central London. Busy place. I came out of my house and there's loads of people walking ahead of me in the same direction with their backs to me. They're walking away. But way in the distance, I see this man. And just three things come instantly into my spirit. Of everyone in the crowd, he's had demonic uh, oppression. Demon has dominated this man's life. But secondly, not now. He's free now. And thirdly, he uses his time now to do good and try and set other people free. Wow, that's a lot of information. And I haven't even seen him. He's got his back to me. So I speed up, you know. And he crossed the road. I crossed the road. I wanted to get ahead of him. You'll never guess who it was. It was Alistair Campbell. Yeah. It was Tony Blair's sidekick walking down the street. I couldn't believe it. I thought, that's Alistair Campbell. So I went home, Google, you know, and lo and behold, what did I find out? Suffered from depression, demon all his life, severe depression, but of his own volition broke free and now spends his time, not in politics, actually going around teaching other groups of people on depression and breaking. Wow. Amen. I'm saying this for a reason. You can tune your spirit so that you can hear. Right? God wants to speak. In the book of Job, it says this. God does speak now in this way and now in that way, but you don't perceive it. Ah. So God is speaking to you, trying to speak to me every day. All day, every day. He is a communicator of the highest order. Trying to get his word through to you, through to me. So my, my simple question to you is, do you want to increase? Yes. Bit weak, do you want to increase? Yes. Well, it's more than just the Bible and reading it. It's getting to a place where I have trained my spirit through repeated success, if you know what I mean. Repeatedly, the word that I've heard is proven right. And then you get to know his voice separated from other voices. There's many voices, amen. Many voices in this world. But you need to isolate that voice. That's why Jesus would go away on his own. Take the time and the discipline to isolate that voice. So, for example, years ago, God dealt with me on this. I was walking down the street in Dublin, and my phone rang, and there was a phone call from a member in Pastor Stephan's congregation saying that the child, one of our members, was critically ill, going to die, Um, measles on the inside, very serious situation. But as soon as I got the phone call, I got a word. Man, that changed me. Changed me completely. It gave me enormous confidence. And God spoke to me, go, I was going to go and heal this child. Amen? When you have a word inside you, you're unstoppable. Right? Nothing. I went into that hospital and everybody, it didn't affect me at all. Because the word was in me. Now, my point is this. 
I could have gone to the hospital. That child was healed, and it was a miracle, a complete miracle. I could have gone to the hospital and quoted scripture. Huh. And many people do that. How many times have you been asked to pray for someone? And you go and you do the right thing, the so-called religious thing. Well, this is this and this, and nothing happens. But the, my, my point to you is, I had faith because I had a... Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rima. So what's lacking, this is not the problem. The Bible's not the problem. My hearing is the problem. So in all generations, God's tried to point this out. Listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. Attune yourself to being able to hear me. Now, there's a, we could spend weeks on this because it means you have to put out other voices. Oh, yeah. He, he, he will require you to do that. And as you do that, you'll begin to pick up his voice. Point one in your notes there. Healing came through hearing, right? So that child was healed because I heard. But in the, it wasn't just me. In Exodus, the same thing. Here, the people were going to be sick. Moses had to throw the branch on the water, if you remember. But look at how that whole scenario opens up. He says, if you will listen. So the healing that those people received came through hearing. Amen? Amen. Did you get that? Yes. It's important. The healing came through hearing. So Simeon, Eunice, what are you going to go to America with? And my word to you and to all of us, hear his voice. Simple. Hear his voice. If you hear his voice, if you devote your time and your energy to getting to a place where the word, I mean the real word, shut out every other voice and get his voice, nothing can stop you. Amen? Amen. Healing comes through hearing not religiously quoting scripture. Amen. Amen. Secondly, authority, promotion, position, etc. come through hearing. Look at this in Exodus chapter 19, verse 9. It's the same situation. They were entering the promised land. And look at verse 8. Now therefore, if you obey my voice. Right? So God speaks. Here's the people of Israel. <coughs> They're just about to go to Florida. No, sorry. The promised land. And look at what God says to them. He says, if you obey my voice, you will be kings in this land. You will rule. You will not be servants. They had been slaves. They had been servants. They had been beaten down. That's not going to happen to you. But the rule is, you must hear and obey my voice. Hallelujah. Promotion, authority, position come through hearing. Healing comes through hearing. Thirdly, increase. Blessings and curses. The most famous scripture, actually, in the whole Bible. Everybody uses it. Blessing is increase. Curses are decrease, right? Amen? But look at the difference here in... Sorry, what's the scripture? Deuteronomy chapter 28. It's the same thing. Now, it shall come to pass if you diligently obey my voice. Then you will be blessed. Then you will increase. It's not just hear my voice, but listen and obey my voice. Praise the Lord. Number four, your character and your giftings and your callings are activated in the very same way. That's what happened. A very frightened man called Gideon who was hiding and frightened of the battle, frightened of the warfare. But the word of the Lord came to him. And what did that word do? Completely changed him completely altered his life. He became a, a judge of Israel, a leader of the nation. So I repeat, <laughs> one word can change your life. As I lay on that floor 150 years ago, <laughs> and that word came to me, preach, do you know what? Every day of my life, every moment has been orchestrated by that one word. Everything. It changed everything. Everything. And if you can, I mean, push, folks. Don't come back without it. Don't leave this year without it. Amen? Amen? So generally, you can say to me, well, I don't have a calling. God has never spoken to me about my gifting. God's never brought me into ministry. 
I believe there's something there. You need to be like Gideon. The word of the Lord came to Gideon. He heard his voice and was set free. And at the bottom of page one, you could say to me, well, that's all Old Testament. But it's not just Old Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus spoke in John 10. I am the doorkeeper and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep out by name. And he brings his sheep out. Sorry, my eyesight's so bad, I can't see that. <laughs> he calls them out and he calls them by name. And if you look at this again and again and again, when Jesus is talking about his methodology, these are Jews, right? His methodology of leading them, what is it? My sheep hear my voice. And then secondly, in the same chapter, in verse 16, and the other sheep, and I have other sheep, which are not of this fold. That's you, Gentiles. And look at this. I will bring them in and they will hear my voice. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, eyes forward. Here's those chosen few close to Jesus. And he says, I will lead you with my voice. voice. That's what I do. I am a good shepherd. Be careful that you listen to my voice. There's many ways of shepherding around the world. In New Zealand, they have such vast prairies that they use helicopters, believe it or not. And they drive the sheep that way. In South America, they use horses. In Europe, they use dogs, sheep dogs. Israel didn't do any of that. In Israel, a shepherd used his voice. And he didn't drive. He was out in front, as Jesus says. I will lead you and you will follow my voice. Anybody feel a little bit lost in life? <laughs> feel like life is taking you on a little bit of a detour? 87% of something of people will answer that question yes, by the way, statistically. I'm just, m most people feel that what they're doing is not what they should be doing. Okay? Careful. <laughs> life is short. And he's, Jesus says, if you listen to my voice, I will be your shepherd. You follow along. That was Old Testament and also New Testament. Amen. Amen. Other sheep, that's us will also hear my voice and I will follow and they will follow me. Amen. Just turning over your page there. <clears throat> Don't be frightened. I'll go through this as, as, as quickly as I can. I don't know how you practice your prayer time or listening or hearing from God. But over the years, I've developed a very serious pattern, a discipline. I was in that discipline in the early hours of this morning. The same routine as normal. And I tell you what, folks, it works for me. It's not rocket science. I just simply follow the same things that happen in Scripture. And look at this. It's my opinion that if you can get a place where you can go, that it helps you. Atmosphere is really important to me. If you can get the right place. It is not easy to write a book. I can tell you. It takes a lot of work, a lot of concentration, a lot of effort. I've written eight. And I've never told anybody this before. I wrote them all in the same place. Wrote them all in the same place. It's a coffee shop. <laughs> Yeah, it's called Tinderbox. It's about six miles from my house. So I had to drive past dozens of places I could have stopped, I could have gone in, I could have sat down in the library, in the church. But whatever it was about that place, it just worked for me. And I can remember when I did, nobody ever told me that. My spirit was flowing. It's, a very, it's beside the university. It's a very studious atmosphere. I found a place. And that place became really prolific for me. Sometimes the place I'm in, the atmosphere is not good. It doesn't feel right. And it can interfere with me, right? Now look at Jeremiah, you see? The, uh, at the top of pit, the reverse side. Jeremiah 18. The word of the Lord came uh, from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. That's a place. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Amen? Amen. So there was a place. And Jeremiah had to go to that place. And when he was in that place, whatever way it was, he was going to hear from God. 
So I don't, I haven't, I was out yesterday, I found a place. <laughs> the place I normally use was busy. So I found I've got another place and I went to my other place. And there I just feel right. I hope that doesn't sound weird, but it works for me. Works very well for me. Secondly, many people disagree with this one as well. I like a time. For me, again, multiple scriptures, but Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left the house, and he went to a solitary place. What time of day? (laughs) Very early in the morning. And King David said the same thing. Early in the morning shall I seek thee. And for me, there's just something in that of getting up and being awake and being alive. I love it. It works for me. I just suggest to you to go and try it. Give it a go. Get up early and find that place. But my third highlighted point there in terms of how to hear God's voice, this for me is the most important. It's a disposition. If anybody ever says to you, hearing from God is easy, don't listen to them. (laughs) It's tricky. It's tricky. It is. It's slippery. Do you know the way I look at it? I have to to do this constantly. Say I want to be under this beam of light here. And this is God's voice. When I go to Tinderbox or wherever, I'm going to write a chapter. I'm not there. And hearing from God, it's positioning. And God reminds me of something I did wrong and I repent. God reminds me of something I should have done. Sorry. And suddenly I'm moving and I'm being sensitive in my spirit until there. Got it. Amen? Amen. So hearing from God, it's, it's a disposition. It's a place in my spirit that you have to become sensitive to find. And the more you do it, the more you practice it, God will give you a word, Michael, and then he'll prove it true. Just to encourage you. Then he'll give you another word and he'll prove it true. He's bringing you somewhere. He wants you to gain trust in him. Trust in his voice. Same way with the patriarchs, same way with you. Same way with me, same way with you. If you will just listen to my voice, you can be kings in the land. That sick will not be sick. Amen? Amen. Rule and reign. This was the route that he took, Old Testament and you. And by the way, in John 10, where he's just about to be crucified, He goes back over it again, just so that you don't miss the point. Make sure that you're hearing from me. And some of the words you hear, I'll talk about it another week. Some of the things you hear can be outrageous. So you could never tell anyone because they'd think you're off the wall. Maybe you do think I'm off the wall. Some of the things you hear from God are really astonishing, you know? And you have to kind of get used to that and live in that space. I want to say something now that I've wanted to say for a long time. My eyesight is appalling, so I have to use my iPad to to see the scriptures because I can't see a large print Bible anymore. People say, use a large print. It doesn't matter. (laughs) It doesn't matter to me. But take a look at this. Ray, I'm going to put this down a minute because I have to, but I'll rip. Thank you very much, Simeon. That would be helpful because they're recording. Take a look at this. This is a Bible. Amen? This is a phone. Bible, phone, phone, Bible, okay? This is not a phone. This has not got Facebook, doesn't have Google, doesn't have Twitter, okay? When I'm reading it, it doesn't... mm, mm, mm. (laughs) When I'm reading it, a little banner doesn't come up saying you've just got a text. No, none of that. This is only a Bible, okay? Now I'm going to test you. You ready? What is that? I was hoping one person would say Bible. That's a phone. This is a Bible. Everybody say amen. Thank you, sir. Very simple. But you know what? This thing here, you guys need to control it. Now, I I need extra large print highlighted and all the rest of it to see. So it's useful for me. But I am concerned about phones, I have to say. I'm concerned because they're, they're dominating too much of our lives. I mean, if Johanny was leading the worship like she led last week, and she came up here and she said, would you all please raise your hands? That's what she did, remember? She said, just raise your hands, and everybody in this place raised your, raise your hands, remember? We were all worshiping. Imagine if she did this. Let's just raise our hands. 
Slight difference, eh? <laughs> Slight difference. Let's just raise our hand. And this thing has a place. And I'm telling you, God is very jealous of his place. Or if, I, if Anne says she's got a problem, she wants to talk to me. Okay, Anne. I go to Anne and I say, what's the problem? And we talk. Or Anne can say, I've got a problem. Will you talk to me? I say, okay, Anne, what's the problem? Slight difference. Slight difference. I'm not only available to you. I'm also available to anybody who might want to call me, okay? In Glasgow, I did a horrible thing. In the middle of my sermon, I set the congregation up for this, but I, I, I made my phone ring in the middle of the message. I said, oh, excuse me, you see? And they're all sitting there. I said, oh, hiya. I said, you know, what? No, I'm not doing anything important. <laughs> now, for coffee? Yeah, sure. And I just walked out. <laughs> you see? And my, my point to the people is, does that make you feel important? That makes you feel totally disrespected. But I tell you this, folks, we do not have any hesitation when we are engaged with God if this thing rings. True? No hesitation to pick that phone up and just dismiss the Lord. Isn't that true? If you're in your house or whatever. And I think we need to get some kind of a grip on not letting this control the this is a voice multiple voices amen so look at it and you know in, in in a if you go to court in the uk you'll be roasted if you used your phone if you, correct you, it's a very strict rule you can't pull a phone out in a courtroom and that's just a human judge and scripture talks about the courts of heaven and we want to enter into the courts of heaven where we hear his voice. And that, for me, requires discipline. One of the people I live with was mocking me the other day. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Because I go to the park, I have a little bench that I sit on, and she's seen me there many times. I think she thinks, <laughs> you know, and I was going out the door, I said, hi, and she says, oh, are you going to sit on your little bench? <laughs> Hallelujah. Sad, isn't it? But you see, you don't hear from God. You don't hear from God. But I do hear from God. And I will go to my little place. And I will separate myself. I've done it for years and years and years and years and years. I killed the lion. I killed the bear. And I can also kill this Philistine. There are problems in your future that if you just learn to listen now, on a consistent basis, he can speak to you and you will destroy that problem. That's what David was saying. Don't wait for the problem. Don't wait for the issue. Start listening now and in little ways God will speak to you. Amen? Amen. So get yourself a place. Answer me not out loud. Do you have a place? I do. Answer me this. Do you have a time? I do. I like very, very early when it's even dangerous in London. Very, very early. And remove every single distraction that is in God's way so that you're tuning in to his voice. Amen? What, what will that do for you? I'll run through these quickly. It will remove the delays. It will remove the detours. It will remove the confusion. And so many Christians saying that nothing is happening. So many believers, either nothing is happening or there's not enough happening. And if you can hear his voice, it will, instead of 40 years, it's 11 days, right? Instead of a 40-year journey and arriving in 10 decades time, realizing I took the wrong turn, God's voice can stop you going through major detours in life. It took them 40 years because they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen. Delays detours, confusion. The word cuts through all of that confusion and brings clarity to you. Amen? Secondly there, people ask me this, uh, sorry, they, they, through hearing God's voice. So many things in scripture you can see happen, people. You will be built up, encouraged, changed, renewed, transformed, cleansed 
admonished and guided. That's a lot. That's a lot to miss, isn't it? That's a lot to miss in your life. And even now in these closing moments of this year, renew your determination to pick out his voice, to hear his voice. Amen? Amen. Who do we hear through? This is another very important point that often gets asked. You hear from God through the leaders that God places over you. That's a critical, that's a primary, number one scriptural rule. God places leaders for a reason, and you're supposed to hear and be guided through them. That's a, a, a basic, right? And by the way, it doesn't matter what the leader is like. The leader can be a complete donkey. It doesn't matter. God still uses the structure and the system. That's what scripture says. You can hear from God through worship. So if you come late for worship, Brian, they're not going to hear. <laughs> come in time for worship because it prepares your soul Absolutely it does. And you will hear from God yourself through that time. You hear from God in the prayer meeting, in prophecy, through scripture, of course, through circumstances and through people, whether they're lost or saved. All of these means. But as I say, in scripture, it's in Job 31, isn't it? God does speak now in this way, now in that way, but people fail to hear him. One of the questions that often gets asked to me by pastors is they say, okay, so you're a prophet. You bring private words to people. Do they obey you? (laughs) Do they listen to you? Or do they just ignore you? And my answer to that question has always been pretty much the same. When I bring a word to someone, I've got a word for them. I say, could I talk to you? It all depends whether they've got other voices. That's the problem. If someone is free from restraints, human people I mean, and they'll just receive a word, then they can accelerate and be, you know, catapulted into the ministry in the future. But where there's competition with other voices, that's where the word of God gets compromised and people back off because God doesn't tolerate that. Amen? So make sure that his voice is above every other voice, right? Right? His voice is beyond and above everything else. When he speaks, because I've tuned my, my ear, my spiritual ears to hear that, I will obey. And lastly, the nature of that voice. And this is so many people ask that. Do you hear a booming voice from heaven? Do you hear thunder and lightning? That was Elijah's problem. No. Very simply. The closest thing I ever came to an audible word was that word preach. Preach. That was the closest thing to an audible word. That scared the life out of me. I was terrified by it. Because it came from beyond, beyond, it came so far away. And when I heard it in my mind, I said, I wanted the mountains to fall on me. Because I realized this God can reach me. He can get me. I can't get away from him. That was the effect it had on me. It took time to calm down. You know, that really was the voice of the Lord. Amen? So do you hear a booming voice? No. Don't have preconceptions. I've got to go to another church this afternoon. Very different from us. Different worship, different style, different everything, but still hearing from God. So don't get a preconception. I have to hear this way or that way. That was Elijah's problem. It's got to be loud. It's got to be quiet. No. No could be a word of wisdom. A word of wisdom is a word of what to do. It could be a word of knowledge. A word of knowledge is something you don't know. God can speak to you. Either of those are covered in Corinthians. But last of all, let me conclude with this. Learn to educate your gut feeling. Who was it? Richard Roberts, the revivalist, who said one of the most important things a, scripture ha- uh, a Christian has is their gut feeling. In other words, your spirit inside you, you've trained it. You've trained that. How many, I mean, think back on your life. When you were in a situation and somebody says, come on, let's do this. And you go, no. But they put pressure on you and you do it and it's a disaster. Remember? Right. That was your gut feeling. You went against your own better judgment. That's what you did. And you regretted it. Learn to obey That gut feeling. Train yourself. Attune yourself to that. 
So Simeon and Eunice, you guys have been incredible servants of the Lord. Absolutely incredible. And we thank you with all of our hearts for your enormous time, length of service, great patience. Amen? Amen. She said no, Eunice. <laughs> great, great patience and great long suffering. And indeed, as you said, Easter camp year after year that you enjoyed. Huh? You enjoyed. And these guys did a lot of the work. And our kids out the back there looked after for so many years. Wonder if Jesus was here, Simeon. Wonder what he would say to you. Wonder would it be any different than he said to the twelve? I'm going to lead you with my boy. Just you make sure that you hear that voice. There are many people in America to lead you this way and that way. Many people in your family tree, many friends, many acquaintances, correct? We all have. But God's word to them, to me, to you, to you, to you, please trust me and listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. And you can ride above the storm. These sicknesses and diseases that came upon the people, and they're not going to come upon you. And over and over and over again. So will you join with me in praying for them, but also praying for ourselves? That in the closing moments of this year, that you find God's voice in a new way? Amen? Amen. St stand with me one moment. Just want you to pray for yourself one moment. As I said at the beginning, for me, this is an effective word. An effectual word. And I want it to have an effect on you. Father, come in this place, we pray. Holy Spirit, would you put a new found determination in us to seek you in a certain place. To seek you at a certain time. And to remove every distraction that comes between you and us. To give you the, the highest place in our hearts and in our hearing. Sanctify the voices in our lives. Give us wisdom to isolate your voice and to tune our spirits to hear your voice. Father, I pray for all those here and all those listening around the world that you will bless them with the grace to hear once again. Just pray for yourself right now. Position yourself. Position yourself under that light that you will hear his voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, folks, it's very sad to me that I hear from God for you and you don't. So I'm waiting for you to hear the same word. Let God speak. Father, will you speak in this place? Speak in this place. Oh, Holy Spirit, speak in this place. Hallelujah. Father, I pray particularly for the, the shortness of time, the last 37 days, that every day will count. Every day will count. Every second counts. And we will not waste this moment or waste this time. We'll give it to you and we'll enter 19 stronger than we left 18. More able, more attuned to your spirit. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So please be seated. I'm going to ask Eunice to come and join us. And Simeon, maybe David and Emma, Sandra, Brandon, uh, Michael, Janet. Hello. We're still praying. Bless you. <laughs> Come and join us here. Come on, Simeon. Can we give these guys a round of applause? <laughs> now, is the woman going to do all the talking? Or? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you uh, want to share your okay. words and Eunice and then maybe David, you can pray. Do you want to say something first? Um, you can go first. Uh, praise God. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for the opportunity. I am grateful to God for this moment and I'm grateful to God for all of your lives. It has been a great honor to be given the privilege to serve in this uh, church. I began my work here, I think, in 2005 when I first, I first joined the church in 2003. 
uh, like everybody else, you know, you all walk into church, people are preaching, you get involved, and then eventually one thing led to the other, went through LIW teaching, got involved with youth, got involved with children's ministry, eventually got involved with regional meetings, got involved with department meetings, got involved with, uh, what else? Uh, Easter camp and all the rest of it. You know the story. But it's been a great privilege. I've been uh, strengthened over the years. Um, you know, thinking about the word today is very uh, good. I praise God for that. Um, the fact that God speaks to us and it's crucial that when you hear the voice of God like it came today, you have faith to believe and obey. Uh, years ago, I remember I was praying in uh, Barnet. We used to have a church office down in Barnet. And it was like very clear, like somebody will whisper to your ears, a very clear word. Um, you've been covered enough, you've been trained, you've been strengthened in all kinds of ways. It's time to step out. Those days we've been trying to reach out to Ireland and all other places. We wanted to reach out to the communities around here. So I said to the pastor, then Pastor Gospel, I began to reach out to Bristol. Some of you know I went with Brandon to Bristol several times. We reach out to a community. Up to now, I get calls from the place. Is the church still around? I said, no, we are not there anymore. We came for a season, and then it passed. Reach out to Metin Kings, reach out to different places. But, you know, four or five years ago, I went to the state, and God spoke to my heart again about the place, and I decided to begin to reach out to people. Many people thought, what are you trying to do? There are many churches here. And then I told them, well... There may be many churches here, but I believe God has created a space, a vacuum for us to begin to reach out to people. So I began to look into that vacuum, and I realized that there were people without a connection, a relationship with Christ. They go to church, Catholic, Pentecostal, and all of them. There were people I reached that had, I can count about 10 churches around their house, right? Pentecostal and all of that, but they've never stepped into a church for years until I got there. That one person, because of him, today, I told him in an email that his brother, uh, who has read the Bible several times, when I met him at first, he told me, brother, I've read the Bible many times over, only to prove a point to those who want to cheat me about the Bible. <laughs> he doesn't want anybody to teach him about the Bible, so he has learned it. I said, no problem. Uh, why don't we come to your house and start talking about the stuff that you know? So I got into the house through a very interesting meal. His brother connected me through a meal. So we ate, and then the girlfriend got interested in some of the things I had to share. So she said, come to my house and let's talk some more. So I went to the house. The girlfriend started talking about dinosaurs. I said, oh, my God, <laughs> dinosaurs. Here we go. Thanks to my son. My son loves dinosaurs, dinosaurs, tassasaurus, and all of that. He would tell me all of that from school. So I began to talk about some of that with her. And then she talked about all kinds. Then I said, okay, I'm going to leave one thought in your brains or in your mind. Think about it, and then we'll talk again. So I left him with Genesis chapter 1. God created the world and spoke about all of that. Eventually, today, they've come together with all of their family, and they are part of our church in the U.S. by the grace of God. So when you hear God's voice and you decide to move, God truly honors his word in your life. Today, I'm reaching out to about 25 people in Tampa and then in St. Pete. Uh, so about 18 of us gather every Sunday to praise God. By the time my family comes, we'll be about 25 or more. <laughs> That's why I want to get them with me quickly. But you have to understand that I'm doing this by myself. You know, I have, when I started, there was nothing basically, and people said, it's not going to work, there are too many people here, and all about God has given us a route in, and we are reaching out to people by God's grace. So thank you all for um, allowing me to serve you in the way I did. I really appreciate God for every single life. It's been an honor. I mean, I cannot uh, do the stuff I did without everybody supporting and working with me. If I came to you and said, let's do things together, and said, who are you? I don't want to work with you. This testimony will not be here. So I really appreciate God for every life that I have encountered and worked with over the years. But I don't want to stop without really appreciating God for the life of my wife, Eunice. Many times I go to places and preach and say things, and then, you know, she's left out. But I just wanted to know that it has not been easy trying to partner with me in marriage, you know, uh, together. For a person like me and the kind of uh, ministry God has given, it's very difficult to have somebody to support you. And I think that she's been... When I was getting married, there were three things on my mind 
that I wanted God to help me with, to find in a person. I wanted somebody with flexibility, number one. And number two, I wanted somebody who would be supportive. And I wanted somebody who would be teachable. And I found it in my wife. She's very flexible. You know, I just have to tell her, I'm going to America. Let's go. And then she's, uh, but eventually she's able to find her way. And then she comes along, you know. And then when it comes to teachability, it's, you know, she struggles. What is this? And then I'll teach her the principles. This is what we're trying to do. And then she will understand and then we'll move on. And she's been an absolute support to my ministry, to the work of God. And we work together on all of these things to the glory of God. So thank you. And I love you very much. And I want to thank God for my children. My children have also been very, very supportive. Uh, some of you have encountered them in different ways. I speak to them. My sheep knows my voice. <laughs> Uh, you're going to sisters so, so behave do that and then that's the report i get so i praise god for their life they've been very very supportive in every way possible and i want to thank them for that i also want to thank uh, pastor mike also for supporting me over the last three years or so since he's been around here uh, encouraging me at different spots to look at different things so that we can do what is right as we pursue um, um, the good news of the lord and reach out to people um, i hope i haven't left anybody out but Thankfully, I also want to thank God for, you know, all the people that have uh, come in the past and gone. This church, I've had different people come through, Pastor Kweku, Pastor Kofi, Pastor Gospel, gave me a lot of opportunities to serve all of you in the house. And uh, Pastor Seward, who has been to, uh, uh, being with the Lord, all of them, I've had different encounters with all of them. And I praise God. I, I thank God for uh, Franklin, Franklin Tan. Can you rise so they see you? He's part of our church. He's from our church in Singapore. <laughs> He's from a church in Singapore. He's part of Region 7 and 8. I was attached to that region while I was there on PLP. And he, we became friends. And I wanted to learn guitar. So I spoke to him and then he decided to teach me free of charge. So he taught me four chords, which I still play today. I have no progress. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So um, um, he came around. We were praying and trusting that God would bring him here so that he can work with our team and also be a blessing to all of you. But it wasn't to be God sent him to Switzerland. So he's there for uh, a student exchange program. And then he decided to pass by to say hello to all of us. Um, so I thank you also for your input in my life. God bless you. I think that's all. Hallelujah. Um, I thank God so much for the opportunity to serve in LFC. I'm going to miss Sunday school a lot. Uh, I know, but it's a work of God. It's just like a transport, the bus. Whenever you go on it, you, have to, you should have a destination. And you come off and someone has to get on it as well. So God has, I, I believe God has used us here. And we have to go and start somewhere else. So keep praying for us. We will miss you. We will miss your support and everything. But it's God's work, so we have to go. And God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Can, I, can I ask the ordained ministers just come and gather around? And if everybody could stand. Stephen, please. Anna, please. Pastor Mike, could I just, before we pray, could I just make a comment? I think they've spoken a lot. And I wish I had a video to show everyone and remind Pastor Simeon of all the things he's done for LFC. As he speaks, I have all these things running through my mind, his commitment and his passion. If you think about camp, Simeon would wake up and run up and down the aisle, arise and shine. And I remember those elements, the commitment. He wakes up to do that. I'm sitting in my bed thinking, oh, goodness, hey, go to bed. But he carried on. And we all know, he'll be chasing the money. He arranges the organization. He was doing the couples uh, sessions before um, Kofi and Juliet took over. And so many things. And Pastor Simeon, you don't remember, the last time you were going and you were praying for members in this church, I will never forget this. You prayed for every single person in this church. And I watched you, and you mentioned every single person's name and some element about their life. And I thought to myself, wow, that is serious commitment and interest in the people that you serve. And it's an example for us to follow, a big one. And with a big round of applause, please, let's appreciate it.
Amen. 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 Gather around, guys. Gather around. You want to step into the middle there? Just gather around and lay your hands. Shall we all please stretch our hands towards him? It's a, it's a really serious journey. And we have here, God is watching. And you know what the reality is, the devil is watching too. He will do anything to frustrate this work. Anything. Through the children, through his wife, through people, as Pastor Mike mentioned. Anything to frustrate this work that Pastor Stimion is about to embark on. So that people can say, well, we said it wouldn't work and it hasn't worked. And so we want to pray on the life of Simeon and his family that this work will be blessed by God. It will not be frustrated because the Lord is with him. That he will have a capacity to expand beyond human imagination. That whatever we ask, imagine or think, God would do above that for Pastor Simeon. Let us pray for one minute, everyone, on the life of Pastor Simeon. Father in, the name of, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we bless you for this moment. And we thank you for the life of Pastor Simeon and his family. Lord, as we pray for them today, we ask that you grant him grace. You grant him blessings financially, spiritually, physically to endure on this work. Let it be that discouragement will not come his way. But in everything, the joy that comes from your spirit will sustain him day by day by day by day and as he finishes his course let it be that he passes that with flying colors reaches out into ministry builds that beyond measure plants churches within the u.s makes a difference let us hear that pastor simeon has made a difference and let us be of a support to him in every way father we thank you and we pray that any plans the devil has against his family in the name of Jesus right here and now we stomp it out we don't allow any access to the evil one to penetrate through his children through his wife through people that he lives with in Tampa in the name of Jesus let him be focused let work let the, the, the worries of this world not distract him let him be focused Lord and the devil shall have no foot place in his life in the name of Jesus we thank you, Lord, and we bless you because we know you hear us when we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.